destructive power of a nuclear bomb is an effective deterrent to any would-be adversary, but deciding to actually use one is tantamount to suicide. A true show of offensive strength is artillery. To launch the missiles that we're about to discuss virtually guarantees victory on the battlefield. Shots from these cannons cause the enemy to scatter in a panic. They're equipped with advanced artificial intelligence that can wage war without any human intervention, as well as guided cluster projectiles. Their radars can track more than 180 objects in 3D up to 155 miles away. These systems can defend against just about anything, be it a satellite laser or even a meteorite. One more? How about being able to shoot down supersonic missiles and continue to fight even when half of its structure is totally destroyed? And that's just the beginning. All over the world, billions of dollars are being invested in the development of rocket technology. And one of the leading countries in this race is Germany. The Iris TSLM is Germany's most advanced air defense system designed to destroy aircraft, helicopters, unmanned aerial vehicles, cruise missiles, ballistic missiles, and basically anything in the sky. Maybe even meteorites. Although it may seem so at first glance, this is far from your typical installation. Unlike other platforms that require cover and separate reconnaissance units, this complex is entirely self-sufficient. The Iris can single-handedly assume a position, identify a target hundreds of miles away, and destroy it with one precision strike. It can also provide 360-degree defense without changing its position. Structurally, the complex consists of three main elements, a missile launcher, a control vehicle, and a radar station. That last one's the highlight. The current generation of the Iris TSLM is equipped with two radars, one of which operates in a completely radiation-free stealth mode to keep the system hidden, while the second provides omnidirectional 3D tracking of more than 180 targets at a distance of up to 155 miles. The data is then transmitted to the operator's monitor, and it looks like a computer game. Before the enemy even appears in the complex's field of vision, powerful Iris-T guided missiles are already on their way. They can hit targets at an altitude of up to 12 and a half miles. That's higher than modern fighters can even fly. Even some low-flying satellites are in the strike zone, so conventional combat drones certainly don't pose a threat. It's more of an artillery sniper weapon where we would take out what we call a high priority target, maybe some sort of uh, a higher level command and control node. The Iris can defend against anything, a claim that'll be put to the test in Ukraine very soon. There it will make a suitable companion to the American NASAMS and even compete with it for the title of best means of defense. Speaking of NASAMS, this system has long been considered the best air defense platform of our time, a reputation that it's rightfully earned. But what makes it so powerful? First of all, mobility. It only takes 10 seconds for it to react to a threat and activate its projectiles. After releasing a six-gun volley, it quickly leaves the area to avoid counterfire. It only needs 90 seconds to transition from combat mode into a mobile position, which is practically a record. Another advantage is that each part of the complex can be serviced and function separately. In fact, even if half of the installation falls off during battle, the other half can still provide defense. As a nice bonus, it's now possible for the weapon to interface with other air defense systems and collaborate. This simple feature saves a lot of ammunition, as it allows separate installations to coordinate how many rounds are fired at a given target. With a speed of more than 3,200 feet per second, the AIM-120A is the main weapon of NASAMS. Its effectiveness has already been proven 100 times in battle. It's a simple missile to employ. Uh, it's uh, straightforward in its design. It's in complexity has certainly uh, increased as it's evolved over the years, but it was designed to be an easy missile to shoot, uh, a reliable missile to get a good kill, and one that you didn't have to uh, think a lot about or really work hard to sweeten up your shot. However, even the AIM has one big drawback. Supersonic fighters can simply ignore it and zoom away. That's why this complex performs best when it works in tandem with something like Germany's Iris. To better understand their power, allow me to make a small comparison. 
Although both of them have the same range of 25 miles and a maximum strike altitude of 12 miles, the German machine has a vertical launch. This is an important feature because it reduces the launch time when a target is coming from an unexpected direction. While the NASAMs waste time turning around and getting back into combat position, the Iris is already combat ready, regardless. The German weapon also has a more powerful radar and can see targets up to 150 miles away. Thanks to the connectability feature, it can share that information with the NASAMs, which can then move to an optimal location. At the same time, the American complex has an extremely important advantage. Its missiles are much cheaper and can even destroy small targets like kamikaze drones. In addition, the AIM-120 is a bestseller on the market, meaning that both the complex and the missile will receive regular upgrades while also remaining highly available. What's more, very soon a new high-speed projectile will significantly increase the complex's combat potential. The primary missiles used in NASAMs would be AMRAM and AIM-9X. The AMRAMs and AIM-9Xs can be used both by the aircraft and in a ground-launched capability. Of course, both platforms have their pros and cons, but they're perfect complements to each other when they work together, capable of defending a vast territory from any type of air attack. Such air defense systems are indeed of great interest to the government, and huge amounts of money are being invested in them. However, just as intriguing are multiple rocket launch systems which aren't meant for defending but attacking. The HIMARS, a cannon that has exceeded all expectations. As you know, this installation is designed to destroy all possible ground targets, a task it handles with flying colors. Like the NASAMs, the HIMARS is very mobile. Not only can it move at 53 miles per hour, it can also attack instantly if a stable intelligence transfer is established. By constantly changing its position and delivering powerful blows, the complex may never be struck by the enemy at all. Yeah, they just got a fire when ready, fire command. Uh, so as soon as they moved out from the high point to the firing point, they'll shoot that rocket and uh, get steal on target. But in today's modern warfare, excellent mobility isn't enough to make a weapon legendary. The developers clearly knew this when they gave the HIMARS such a huge variety of ammunition. Among the numerous ballistic, high explosive, and cluster warheads, the MGM-140 guided ground-to-ground -ground missile created by legendary Lockheed Martin stand out. They can fire up to a distance of 186 miles and beyond. They're equipped with a system of maneuvering and retargeting, allowing flight trajectories to be changed on the go. Such a projectile can destroy critical enemy bases by raining down half a ton of explosives. Perhaps the complex's most interesting surprise is its advanced artificial intelligence. Even the current HIMARS onboard computer can handle most processes like reconnaissance, guidance, redirection, and transitioning to combat readiness. But that wasn't enough for developers. So the installation will soon receive the next generation of intelligence that won't need human input whatsoever on the battlefield. With the help of a special remote control, the operator will be able to give the most important commands from a safe location while the computer handles the rest. The HIMARS capabilities are quite impressive, but like the NASAMS, it also has a German competitor. The Mars 2 Multiple Launch Rocket System, which is actually just a licensed copy of the American M270 MLRS, has received a series of upgrades that have raised it to a new level of power. The Mars is designed to destroy enemy vehicles, artillery batteries, air defense systems, and command posts. Plus, it can create minefields. But how? The incredibly powerful attacks by the Mars are made possible thanks to the cumulative fragmentation warheads on its missiles. Just one shot can cover entire fields with a dense chain of explosions that pierce armor up to six inches thick. Just imagine what 12 of them could do. But that's just the beginning. The Mars also has advanced technologies on board. For example, the tow anti-tank missile, which is loaded with homing submunitions. The warhead releases a swarm of small projectiles in mid-flight, each of which finds a target and dives down from above, leaving no trace of heavy equipment. Its second trump card is a cluster warhead packed with AT-2 anti-tank mines for remote mining over a given area. It fires the projectile, creates an impenetrable field, and goes about its business. That's how the Mars gets it done. 
The complex itself consists of a launcher, fire control equipment, and a transport vehicle. All of the structural elements are well protected by thick armor that can even stop large caliber machine gun bursts and high explosive shrapnel. As a little bonus, the Mars crew can even survive a nuclear explosion. It's all thanks to the cabin, which features a system of collective protection against weapons of mass destruction with filters and a ventilation unit. It's impossible to say for sure which gun is stronger, the High Mars or the Mars, but both of them would be an excellent matchup against the NASAMS and IRIS team. Maybe we'll pit similar systems against each other in future videos to determine which is the best. Uh, the artillery is uh, one of the staple backbones. If the infantry doesn't have rounds to uh, protect them down there, uh, then they just get annihilated after time. There's only so much they can do, and what we provide is that rear support that and with that, our videos come to an end. Thanks for watching all the way through. Don't forget that you can support the channel by leaving a like. It really motivates us to release new, interesting content for you. Also, leave a comment letting us know what you thought about the video. We love reading them. Thanks for watching. See you soon.